mic back on is you're good. Okay, thank you. Do you need to say something to me, sir? Hey, Brendan, do you have to have two pictures up? Who's looking for me? <laughs> oh, are you okay with the recording? Do you want yeah. me to turn one off, Councilor Warren? Warren? No, no, well, there's one picture of you like the rest well of us, edited, and then there's a picture so. of you sitting in council chambers, and it's just taking up space on the screen. Um, the recording is continuing. We'll edit it. Okay, super. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Councilor Warren, I, I turned mine off. Now you've gone completely. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm just. Oh, no, now, now it's just you on council chambers. That's my camera. Yeah, that that's that's because we're using that microphone. Oh, in that case, go back to the way you were because you can't see you when you're like that. But yeah, I was just I was I thought you were pointing out my double chin, and I, and I was like, okay, I appreciate it. I'll shut it off. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's why we grow beards because we have double chins. <laughs> that's right. I can turn the camera. Off. That's right. There. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna call the meeting back to order at. 741. Thank you everybody for continuing to be with us. Um, and uh, thanks, thank you again, Councillor Thompson, for the five-minute H2O break. Let's uh, let's carry on. Yes, Councillor Rapp. Thanks. I just want to make one thing clear. Uh, going back to Chad's question about a plebiscite, etc., and some comments that were made earlier. The idea of not having a plebiscite was obviously uh, approved at JFAC. So there had to be either 11 or more people that voted said, yeah, we won't have a plebiscite. So maybe our bad, but at the end of the day, that's the decision we made. And uh, at the time, we thought it was the best one. And I, and I think I said something about the reasons why, because you want to get the information, find out if it's even feasible. That's, that's what we spent the last year doing. Say, is this something we can do or is this not something we should do? And we studied it, we said, yeah, it's something we could do. And again, we had we had to move that ball past the goal line too, which was difficult. But just so you know that it might have even been 14 people that voted in favor. I know, I don't know, but at least 11 did. Just a point of clarification, okay? Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Rob. Um, I think, uh, you know, perhaps had we not even had the 2007 plebiscite, this may not even be a, um, a question, but I think just because there is some history, and I've heard a lot about the history um, of the conversation of amalgamation, uh, that I think part of that conversation, the plebiscite needs to be addressed, just in some respect. Um, so I do appreciate you addressing it. I appreciate Councillor Vandenhoek bringing it up. Um, and if, if that's it for that, let's continue on and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving. Um, uh, one other thing that was mentioned in the um, risks and mitigation, uh, uh, it is also recommended to designate an individual slash group to monitor social media comments and concerns and to determine any common themes and how best to address. So with everything being online, um, Responses will be handled through the Q&A website, communication updates, and other tactics. Was there someone appointed uh, to facilitate Facebook and other social media websites, Councillor Waring? Yeah, this was done by the committee, the subcommittee on um, uh, dealing with it. Okay, so you guys so just got we, We're all together, we're keeping an eye on everything. We were coming to our subcommittee meetings. We were discussing what concerns were, uh, aligning them up so that we could come back with the right answers, uh, or at least we could cover all the questions uh, properly. Thank you, Councillor Waring. Awesome. I'll move right through that if there's no other comment. I just, just wanted to know if there was any, any, with the focus being on line, I just wanted to know if there was a group that was was taking taking that into consideration. Thank yeah, you. and not, not only did we uh, do that, we also, every question that came in was sent to the Minister as part of the package and the Thank replies. You. Thank you very much. I did see that there's, there's quite a few of those comments in, at the beginning of the package. Uh, okay, another question um, on 
just for clarification purposes, uh, 249 water and sewer treatment. Since 2013, Black Diamond and Turner Valley collaborate and equally cost share on the water treatment facility, providing potable water to each town. Um, just in regards to equally contributing to that, are both towns uh, both uh, have, have both towns equally contributed to the water treatment plant up to date? Council Warren. Yeah, the, uh, the way Shrook works is that they build the town by the cubic meter rate of water used by the town. And then they bill the capital expenditures as a percentage of ownership in Shrook. So any capital is 45, 45 BD and TV and 10% to the county. Then it's up to each individual town to look after its own distribution system and to charge back to the residents uh, sufficiently to, re to um, pay back short plus more, put money in reserves plus do all the maintenance and repairs and everything that's necessary. Now, there is a difference in the two towns, how we handle that, but that's up to the two towns and the administration and the councils to decide. If we were a, an amalgamated community, then it would be the same for everybody. Much appreciated, Councillor Waring. Councillor Rao, please go ahead. Yeah, just to add something to what Councillor Waring said, we pay 45, 45, 10 for the two towns and the, and the uh, county. But as far as usage is concerned, every consumer pays their own. And even though like the, uh, the amount of water that's used is far greater in Black Diamond than Turner Valley, but we they still get to pay the same for capital, which is is a good thing. They pay for the water they use, of course, but they pay less than than comparable amount for the for the for the capital part. Thank you, Councillor uh, Council Councillor Thompson. Yeah, and and I don't know if all of the new councillors are aware, may, maybe, maybe not. I'm sure Daryl is aware. Um, in 2013, when we had the flood and the Black Diamond Water Treatment Plant was wiped out, um, we were already in negotiations to move forward with, uh, with the, the regional facility. But at that point in time, it was gonna be two pipelines, one running over to Turner Valley, one running over to Black Diamond. But unfortunately, because the Black Diamond Water Treatment Plant got wiped out, there's only the one pipeline now. So um, it, it, in many ways, we were so fortunate that, uh, um, I, I guess we weren't fortunate the flood happened, but um, the, the uh, agreement is 45, 45, 10. Uh, uh, Black Diamond did pay us uh, uh, the 45% uh, into the pipeline and that. But a lot of the upgrades and the pipeline itself, fortunately, was paid by DRP. So that was a huge cost saving for uh, both municipalities. Um, but it was it was a godsend for Black Diamond because uh, if we hadn't been in that negotiation process and uh, and that it wouldn't have quickly as happened. Um, so um, that was a real true. Uh, what would you say? We can do this and we can do it together and we can do it better together, in my opinion. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. <laughs> Councillor Rapp, would you like to follow up before I go to Councillor? Just, just very quickly, I don't know if all of you were here when we had a, a surface water line running from Turner Valley past the golf course all the way to Black Diamond because, well, as Ms. Thompson says, there was no water in Black Diamond. So it's kind of, it was kind of cool before. So it was kind of good cooperation at the time. Thank you, Councillor Rupp, for highlighting that. And thank you, Councillor Thompson, for bringing that to our attention. That is nice. The, part of the reason why I asked that this question is just to highlight some of the uh, shared responsibilities that the two towns already have and um, lending a hand to one another um, in times of need. Um, so I just want to take that was le um, leading up to that. So I thank you both for recognizing that. Councillor Lawn, please go ahead. My comment basically is just touching on Councillor Rab. I was just going to say thank God for fire hoses. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Halan. It's good to see some smiling faces. There we go. 
let's keep those on. Uh, um, I'm going to carry on. Um, uh, okay, so I'm just going to move uh, down to. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to point something out on page 303 uh, as it's the introduction um, to, excuse me while I, it's the introduction to, I believe the amalgamation feasibility study. And this kind of, kind of goes back uh, to language that's being used. I read it, I read a line in it um, and I didn't really, I wasn't really too fine um, of it. Optimists will tell you that anything is feasible, while pessimists will always look for a reason to delay the decision. Um, I just kind of struggled with that pair, that one sentence because um, just because you are asking questions doesn't necessarily make you a pessimist. So I just want to bring that up. I thought that that was kind of an unusual sentence to have in a uh, study that was produced by a third party, um, kind of eliminating potentially uh, some questions that people might want to ask, they meant, oh, I don't want to be a pessimist. So I'm going to move right along. Um, on page 310, public perspectives, this just kind of goes along with uh, consultation. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I read here, the level of participation was relatively consistent over the course of the week. Um, 123 attendees at four Black Diamond events and 143 at five Black Diamond events, representing approximately 7% of the collective population over 19 events. Um, additionally, 269 questionnaires were either submitted in person or online between the commu two communities. I just found that number really low. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to speak to that, but um, having less than one out of every 10 residents uh, attend. Um, just didn't seem like a lot of public engagement, but again, just something that I wanted to highlight. Uh, Councillor Waring. It's a case of you can take the horse to water, but you can't make it drink. We, we, we have a very poor residential turnout for any events here when it comes to open houses. We, we research back on the different things we did with open houses in Turner Valley for bylaws or for changes to the um, utilities rates and these type of things. And it's the same 20 or 30 or 40 people that come to everything. And if you get a hundred not people involved in a meeting, you're doing really well. I mean, at the online meetings were around 70, 80, maybe most 90 people. Um, I see Daryl shaking his head. I don't know whether he agrees or he disagrees, but I'm sure he'll talk about it. Um, yeah, I, I logged into your, um, your meeting online the other night about the redevelopment of the downtown core. And I think there was something like 50 people logged on. Well, the majority of those people are councillors, administration, and people like me in Turner Valley. So, you know, I'm not being detrimental when I'm saying this, but it's very difficult to get the public interested unless, you know, it's sort of really hitting them in the pocket right away. Um, the best turnout we've ever seen in Turner Valley was Mr. Williams and his, his group of ratepayers when they were uh, angry at the council. Uh, just before an election, and there was a couple of hundred people turned up for the meeting. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's never well supported meetings like that. Thank, thank you, Councillor Waring. Is that is that someone's fault? Not okay. Can I just can I just have a friendly reminder? We've been hearing a beeping phone for the last half hour. If I could just remind everybody on that has their mic on, just to like just mute your phone, please. That would be great. Uh, Councillor Rab, please go ahead. Yeah, I hate to keep talking, but uh, I have to say this. When you see a small number of people, I always, what I always think, based on my experience, is people are okay with the idea. If they were really upset, they'd be there. Like, look at the border here between here and Coots, you know, and look at the protests in Ottawa. If people are angry, they'll be there. If people are okay, now some of you may disagree with me, that's fine, 
But I'm just saying for me, when I don't see a lot of people, I say, well, it's, it may be apathy, but it could be say hey, people say, yeah, it's okay. Well, we're, we're can support this. So that's how I read it. I read it more positively. Could be wrong, but that's my read. I appreciate, I definitely appreciate that, uh, Councillor. I, 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 I too have that same sentiment. Um, but I, I just wanted to bring it to light because it just was, a, you know, it's just a low number. Um, Councillor Lalonde, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with regards to Councillor Waring's comments, the one public ho house I attended on amalgamation, I think had just under or just over 60 people, not quite as high as the 80, 90. But the comment you make regarding the downtown area revitalization plan where the majority of the people on it, a good half at 58 people were counselors, were staff. The same thing can be said with our public engagement meetings that we had in the summer. It's 14 counselors, six staff, consultants, town staff. So you said it perfectly when you said you can lead a horse to water. Again, and again, going on Councillor Rab, unless people get their arms up and cause a fight, while the history in this town says until you slap someone in the face, they don't come out to fight. And we've gone through it. We've done our water rate bylaw in the past and our utility rates, and it goes through first reading, and we do a hour-long delegation from the engineers, and there's nobody in the gallery. And it goes through first reading, and it goes through second reading, then it goes out to the public, and somebody posts on Facebook, hey, we're all going to go broke, and 50 people show up to lose their mind over... Five bucks a month. The problem is, is the time it takes to slap somebody in the face and the time it takes to correct it or do whatever. That's the impact that this is having on the community. And I think a lot of people, well, for lack of better terms, need to need a slap to go, are you really aware of what's going on? And I said it once before, and I'll reiterate it. I said it last August when we voted on this says if we had the plebiscite vote and 90% of the people came out and said, yeah, this is what we want, I was the first to say, I'll shut up because then the 10% that I'm talking to, we're wrong. But until I think we know, we're not getting the notion out there of what's involved to the people, and that's why I don't think you're getting the pushback. If you look at the emails that have come through in the last three, four days, it's more than any online participation we've had since we started this thing because people are now getting involved for the better, for the worse, whatever it may be, people's voices are being heard and that's what is important. So I just think we need more of it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Alon. And that, that was my intention uh, of bringing that quote up is that public engagement at this point is, is paramount and it has been in the past, don't get me wrong. Um, but I just, it's difficult to go through with it and then have, the people come out and say, what is all this about? Um, and I know that a lot of people are informed, but that's why I was bringing that up. Uh, I'm going to go to Councillor Gordon and then to Councillor Bain and then Councillor Vandenhoek. I see all you guys. I apologize. We're, we just got a lot going on. Thank you guys for your patience. Continue, uh, Councillor Gordon, please go ahead. Yeah, so like I said, bear with me. I got a really good fever happening tonight. So if I'm not super clear in my thoughts, I, I ask that uh, ahead of time, I apologize for that. You sound great. Good. Um, on this point of making decisions and so on and so forth, both Black Diamond and Turner Valley residents have said to me, we elected you. We elected you with a purpose to make decisions for the best welfare of our community. The MGA dictates the very first responsibility a counselor has is that very mandate. And so there are multiple reasons as to why we haven't got the public engagement that each of us would have preferred. But time and time again, business owners in Black Diamond, Turner Valley, residents in Black Diamond, residents in Turner Valley have said, we elected you so that you could spend the energy and invest in the time to determine what are the best decisions for the welfare in the long term of our community. They've entrusted us with that. And we did that with this process. And I'm and and you know, we're discussing the process. We're not even getting to the letter yet. So I still hold my point of order on that because we've got to get to the letter. The letter is asking us to move forward with a resolution at our next council meeting, whether or not we're in support or against. What we've done tonight is answering questions on process. 
but I want to bring our, our, our focus to who we are as counselors and our mandated responsibility and why we've been elected. And I think if we settle on that, we'll take a step back and say, what's the best decision we can make for the welfare of our community? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. Uh, Councillor Bain, I believe I had next before Councillor Bain. Yeah, I was just going to ask what the turnout was uh, percentage wise on the uh, in the municipal election. A very clear question was asked and we, you know, who do you vote for? And we got a lot more turnout, I believe, with a very clear question than some of these forums. That's just a point that I'd like to have. Thank you, Councillor Bain. Councillor Vandenhoek. Just like to uh, go back to um, uh, Gary's comment there about the uh, the people who who would oppose things. Um, you know, it was brought up quite a few times that uh, people don't often find there's an issue until it slaps them in the face. And I think uh, for our town, especially the RV bylaw was was a big wake up call on that. A lot of people didn't know what was going to happen until they realized they couldn't park their RV in the front of their house anymore. So with that. You know, we talk about people who voice a lot of opinions, and if they would have made a bigger stink, they would have made a you know a bigger deal out of it, like the border stuff. I really want to point out that that is still a fringe minority. You know, you can take a hundred thousand, or uh, you can take ten thousand people out of a million people, and that is still one percent. So you can make as big of a stink as you want about it, but people don't often understand the issue until it slapped them in the face. So much like um, uh, Councillor Gordon has brought up. You know, people elected us to make the hard decisions and we don't always have to agree. And I think right now what we're doing is having a great conversation about different points of view and different uh, ideas. And I think it's it's good that we're having these conversations. So I uh, just like to make that make that point, really. Thank you, Councillor Ben. Uh, Councillor Ben, your hand is still up. Do you still have a question? You OK? OK, no problem at all. Just wanted to make sure before. We continue. Um, Councillor Kloiber, uh, Deputy Mayor Councillor. No, I'm just saying. Yes. Deputy <laughs> Mayor Kloiber, please go ahead. Um, I did, to answer Ted, uh, Councillor Bain's question, I did the math after the election. Uh, there were 800, and I only did it for Black Diamond numbers. I'm sorry, Turner Valley, I wasn't doing two. So um, estimated, and I got these numbers from uh, census data and from uh, questioning our returning officer. So 2,200 eligible voters approximately. And I confirmed that with Alberta Regional Dashboard Census numbers 2020, um, we saw an approximate 40% voter turnout, which is up from an approximate 33% in 2017 if that helps. Thank you, Councilor Kluiver. Well, definitely different than 7%, but uh, nonetheless. Uh, okay, if we're okay with that, I will keep on going. Um, I've got a question um, for uh, Turner Valley Council. Um, this, I'm still in the same place, uh, page 329. Um, Comprehensive collaboration, collaborating on service delivery will set the same levels of service to residents in both communities, reducing competition. Um, I bring this up because when I look at 6.1 on three, excuse me, page 332, evaluate a path forward, I see a shared investment on service delivery. And I'm just curious, um, about our transit system. And because I, I don't know, um, what Turner Valley's thoughts are in regards to that. Um, Black Diamond um, invested in a transit system uh, for both communities. Um, so I just didn't know if anyone had anything to add to that in terms of a shared investment in service delivery. Um, that was a good opportunity to show that. So I was just curious, maybe why Turner Valley walked away from that. Mayor Green. 
Yep. Uh, for the transit uh, system, we agreed at a joint friendship agreement meeting to invest $15,000 each. I'm pretty sure that's the number. Heather could correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, to do a feasibility study on uh, the transit. And that was the agreement. And once that was all said and done, uh, the numbers came back financially. Do you support this or don't you? Uh, and we voted 4-3 uh, uh, to not support it because the financial revenues didn't match up to the expenditures. And we looked at that as a clear loss to the taxpayer for the small amount of uh, uh, good that we believe it would do. So it was a failed vote and um, Black Diamond chose to go after it alone. Uh, and you got a great parking lot and a nice little spot by the river car dip. Looks good. Thank you, Mary Crane. Councillor Dixon. Yeah, sorry, I just want to step back real quick here. Uh, just for clarity, I just looked it up and uh, eligible voters for Turner Valley was 2,090. Actual voters was 731. So, sorry to backtrack, I just wanted to make sure that Turner Valley's information was in there as well. Thank you so much, Councillor Dixon, appreciate that. Uh, okay, no further comments there. Thank you. Um, uh, that's all the questions that I have for tonight. Um, so if uh, if we want to address the letter or if there's any other further questions before we address the letter. Um, and Councillor Dunning, please, sir. <coughs> So one of the questions that came up today, and, and I'm sure I could look it up, but maybe uh, the uh, administration can help me with the answer. Uh, and it was from a supporter of the amalgamation. But the question was, how much how much money does Black Diamond have in reserve and how much money does Turner Valley have in reserve going into the amalgamation? Okay, hang tight with us, Councillor Dunning. We will, we will see what we can find. It's I, I know that I read it in the report. Um, the difference. But that number has been changing because we've been spending. Okay, uh, th great point. I won't look in the report. Okay, uh, CAO Brown is going to verify those numbers for us. Um, is it okay if we if we address the letter and then perhaps accept that when she comes back? Hundred percent. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Thompson. I just want to say to everyone, I thought this was a really good uh, conversation that we had, other than our little slip on the respect thing. And I thought it really needed to be, I, I thought it was great. We, we all needed to do this and to get together. Unfortunately, it took this letter for us to do it. We should have done it right after we all got elected and uh but then some people haven't had the opportunity to thoroughly go through the report so wonderful i think this was a wonderful thing to happen and uh so thank you all for being honest and uh all that jazz and uh let's move forward thank you so much everybody thank you councillor thompson um if i could i'm going to speak to that for a sec so um while we campaigned in the fall um my understanding as I campaign, as I campaigned um, was that, that through the application, we the hope was that we'd hear a yes or a no. And upon hearing differently on January 10th, um, that kind of uh, put new council and myself as a new mayor in kind of an undesirable position as uh, Jamie Wilkie stated on his, uh, on his post. Um, it did take time. Uh, I did not want to make an uninformed, uneducated um, decision like people have pointed out on social media uh, that we appear, me, uh, myself, because I'm new. People have made comments on social media that I'm uneducated uh, and I'm not able to speak to this. So I just wanted to make sure that I had all the facts uh, in front of me. I took this very seriously. Um, and part of this discussion, like you mentioned, clear the air. And I'm, I am really glad that we had this conversation. Um, uh, the minority needs to be heard just as much as the majority. And it's important that people's questions get answered. 
I do not like to hear that people don't like sending messages or emails or texts because it falls on deaf ears. That's not why I was elected. I was elected to listen to everybody. And I encourage everybody that's listening to please continue to send those emails, even if you are the minority, because it does help uh, council and administration make decisions. So thank you very much, uh, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Gordon, please go ahead. Yeah, to give a direct reply to Councillor Dunning, the reserve information in the report is on page 128 as of the time when the report was written. So obviously we've gone through some reserves on, um, for instance, Black Diamond with your recent purchase with your fire truck. Uh, so we'd have to adjust that a little bit, but Councillor Dunning, if you wanted to find it there, specifically as 128, it's a, it's a, it's a chart that's there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Gordon. Uh, Councillor Dixon, please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that Councillor Holiday's had her hand up for about 20 minutes now, so she might want to get a chance to speak. Thank you. I, I apologize. I can't see all the screens on on my monitor, um, and I've been kind of relying on that hand motion that people have been using. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. If that comes up again, please uh, let me know. I, 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 just, I just could not see. I was not intentionally ignoring you, uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Um, please go go ahead. You have as long as you want. Oh, thank you. Um, I think uh, Andrew had a great question, and our reserve information is totally out of date on those reports because we have gone through a lot of projects. I was actually just talking to our CAO the other day about this, and it would be nice to see uh, what the current amounts are at, what our MSI is at, as well as what projects have already been approved. Um, that would be coming out of those. Um, so if admin can do that, that would be fantastic. Uh, that being said, we have made the commitment in this report that whatever reserves each community has stays to the benefit of that community and under amalgamation, we would dedicate those. Um, so yes, it's not a guarantee the next council could change it, but they do so at a political risk. Um, so hopefully th that would be honored. I can't see it not being honored. Um, so, but it is good to know because we have done a lot. We just did Sunset. You guys have done some big projects. Um, I, I have just been a little concerned talking about, um, we've been talking about amalgamation and the whole analogy to the slap in the face. Um, and that is really negative. And I just want to say that is not how I see amalgamation. It's not a slap in face. We are promising to do to create a better community out of this, a more efficient community out of this, uh, one that will save money. Uh, yes, we weren't allowed to look at things that had a sensitive human resource implication. We couldn't go in and redo the org chart um, and and come up with the exact number on savings. So it is wishful thinking, but we do know that it's going to be harder and harder to survive fiscally as small towns separately. So it's wishful thinking to say, oh, we can just stay apart and survive, you know, as good as we are now. We don't know what the future holds. And I think that we are stronger together. And we've made a lot of sacrifices. We have put our staff through a lot in this last year or so of negotiations, wondering what's going to happen. Uh, they have had to run the town operations as as well as look at all these requests that we've had for information. And I remember being a new counselor and you just, you can't trust anything that's put in front of you because you don't understand the process. And I remember I, I came in as a, you know, forensic accountant background where everything, you know, I had to like interrogate and, and look at, and I probably drove the administration of the day crazy at the time. Um, so I, I get where this night is going, um, but we also have, and over the four years, I've learned that we have to trust previous councils. We have to trust uh, the decisions are that they're good, um, that the people that were doing it were doing it out of the best intentions with the best information that they had at the time, understanding that hindsight's 2020 and things do change. Um, so you'll see that as you go throughout your term. Um, so, you know, it, it helped me to remember where I was as a, a new counselor and to put myself in your shoes. Um, and so I get, I get that the pro understanding the process is important for you. Um, but I do really want you to focus on the merits. You know, what does it look like if amalgamation fails? 
you know, are we going to be better off or is this the best path forward for our communities? And I, whether it's wishful thinking or not, I believe this is the best way forward for our communities. It has the most merit. Um, and so I just wanted to say that. And we've we've put in a lot of time. We've made a lot of sacrifices. There's so many projects we've put off in Turner Valley. We have so many staff on short-term contracts or positions that we haven't filled because we've been trying to save to make it easy to transition to a merged organization without having huge severance pay and other issues. We've made sacrifices. I'm sure you have on Black Diamond's side as well. And we have to respect uh, what we've done, we, what we've asked our administration to go through to get us to this point. Um, so just wanted to say that. Thank you, Councillor, or Deputy Mayor Holiday. And I get, <clears throat> excuse me, again, I do apologize for missing you. Um, um, I'm gonna blame it on IT, but it still nonetheless doesn't make any, uh, doesn't make it any easier. Uh, I'm gonna go to uh, Councillor Dunning and to Councillor Long. Councillor Dunning, please. Thank you, Mayor Kelly, and I'd also like to thank uh, um, Councillor Gordon for the for the response. I, I was aware that it was on that on that page, but to uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Holiday's point, it, it's about we have been using it. So I think the person that asked me today, and like I said, they are a supporter of amalgamation, wanted to have an, an updated um, number, and that's kind of what I was going after. Um, I'd also like like to uh, thank. You know all the all the uh, incumbents uh, for being patient with us because we are new, and 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 to uh, Mayor Kelly's point is that we weren't expected to have to make a decision on this. Not that we're going to. It's not our decision isn't final or anything like that. We understand that, but the minister put it on us to have a vote. We thought we we're going to come here, and most of our pillar or our our uh, our campaign promises were to facilitate the amalgamation we didn't think it was going to come back to us we thought the decision was made we're waiting for the oic so please be patient with us continue being patient with us as we process the information there's a ton of it and we also are you know we need to answer and talk and communicate with the people that there's very very close friends of mine that helped me get my position so and they have questions and then there's also people that i've met along the way and there's also other people that i don't even know that are sending me emails and asking questions so they're they're also going through the process because uh, when that letter went out or when that when that uh, article went out in the Western Wheel, this was all new to a lot of folks that 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 was still on the table or or appeared to be still on the table. So we I feel as though I owe it to the or to the uh, to the constituents to process the information as best I can and make the decision based on the information that I get. And to to uh, Councillor Warren, Warren's uh, point that we were elected to represent the people, but being thrown into this, I shouldn't say thrown, but because we do have responsibilities and, and anything can happen as, a, as an elected official, but but to, to, to do this with passion, with understanding and with the, the best, our best foot forward. But we just continue, ask for your continued patience as we very short period of time, because Wednesday's our vote, but to get through this and to, to have a educated as well as we could be and informed decision when we vote on Wednesday for us anyway. But I just like to thank everybody for that. And I will publicly apologize to Mayor Crane. I did get a little bit excited there and, and I, I don't mean anything by it. Um, I, I'll just put that out there. I, I, I wasn't being very professional either, so I apologize uh, publicly because I know this is being recorded and, and I think I should put that out there. And I really do feel that way. I, I do apologize. Thank you, Councillor Dunning. Um, yeah, thank you. Patience is key. Uh, uh, Councillor Lalon, please. Thank you, sir. Um, with regards to Deputy Mayor Holiday's comments on the face slap, yeah, I agree with that. Maybe perhaps the term shock value would have been better. So I agree. Um, with regards to the laws again regarding new council, we hope that reserves stay where they are. We hope that everything stays status quo. Well, council can change their mind and do what they want. We've talked about that earlier. But the one thing they can't do is undo this decision. And I think that's why, personally, the emphasis needs to be made to be perfectly clear and perfectly sure that what we are doing is the best. Granted that 
you talk, we talk often about savings and that, but you have to justify those savings in 10 or 15 or 20 years to people who live here today that they're going to bear the cost of it. And whether or not that's without a doubt, maybe the direction we should be going in, but you got to be able to justify it. And I don't think anybody joined these councils thinking that this was going to be a cakewalk. Um, there's something we have to do respectfully to our constituents. That's why they put us in our constituents rather. That's why we're here good or bad, yay or nay. And I think this needs to be given the respect it needs because this is one decision that this group makes, whether it's 14 yays, 14 nays. McIver makes a final call. At the end of the day, as far as I'm aware, he's just respectfully asking where we stand. So I think we owe it to everybody to do our best to make sure the information is there, factual, out, and justified and hope for the best. That's all I got. Thank you, Councillor Lalon. Appreciate it. Um, Councillor Dunning, I've got some numbers here for you if you care to hear them. Okay, um, capital, we are just a hair over 9 million. And operation, we are a hair just under 3 million. If you, would you like the exact numbers? Are we okay with that? Okay, perfect. Um, just for council's information, this does not include the decision that we made last week with in regards to the transfers. Just for Black Diamonds Council uh, awareness, uh, part of our uh, uh, agenda last week, we dealt with um, some transfers. So, um, our, yeah, so anyways. Uh, okay, Councillor Thompson. Um and also noting that Black Diamond has not completed their budget. So yes. there's going to be some changes there. So we have uh, passed our operating budget or our capital budget. So there may be um, changes there regarding reserves. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Appreciate the transparency from everybody. Uh, okay, I'm going to go CAO patience. Thanks, Mayor Kelly. I'd hate to go a whole meeting just sitting here listening and watching. So I just want to say I'm having some issues getting into my system. So I'm happy to provide that information that was requested tomorrow. I'll uh, sit down with Corinne in the morning and uh, get you our up-to-date reserve numbers and our up-to-date uh, grant numbers. I do want to reiterate what Deputy Mayor Holliday said, however. If, if there's any concern in regards to reserves going to use in the other side or the other side of the new community. That commitment was certainly made in the report and it's well stated in there that that uh, we would dedicate all of our capital reserves and that they would be dedicated to projects within the community that the reserves were uh, achieved in and that we would jointly agree upon an operating reserve and contribute equally to that operating reserve so that those funds would be utilized in the communities that they were that they were acquired in. So any concerns that Turner Valley uh, reserves would be used to pave streets in Black Diamond or vice versa were put to rest in the report and it's it's handled in there in black and white. So uh, but I will provide all of you tomorrow with the, an update on those reserve amounts and those grant amounts for you. OK. Thank you, CAO patients. Um, Councillor Lelon. For clarity purposes, they may have been directed in the report and recommended in the report, but again, nothing in that report is binding to the council of the day. They do what they want as they see fit. That's the bottom line. There's no legal ramifications for them to pull all the money out and do whatever they want, wherever they want. That's a bank roll for them to do. It's recommended, it's hoped for, and as Councillor Deputy Mayor Holliday said before, they may want to face backlash for doing something like that as a council today, just like pay raises. Again, that report is not binding legally in any way whatsoever. That's the bottom line. Thank you, Councillor Alon. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. And I don't necessarily disagree with Daryl. However, um, if, uh, if, uh, any of the other council members, uh, especially the new council members, would have a look at some of the uh, um, dissolution amalgamations in the province. 
the order in council basically has said uh, um, what's going to happen with reserves, et cetera. And because we have, uh, both councils have recommended in the report uh, what we as two councils are recommending to happen with our reserves, I am sure that the minister will take that into consideration and that will be included in the order in council. Um, so I think we're assuming uh, too much sometimes. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Long, are you okay? Sorry. Forgot to take my hand down. Okay, no problem at all. Um, okay. Uh, oh, Councillor Martin, please. Just maybe a quick question, and maybe nobody can answer it at this point in time. What does the Council of Order look like? Is it a document that has certain uh, stipulations? All that I see a couple people nodding their head. Would anyone like to just address it briefly for her? Yeah, Councillor Thompson, please go ahead. Yeah, I've had a look at uh, two orders and councils that came down from the minister. And yeah, he, he sets out exactly what he or he or she, I guess I should say, because by, by the time this come down, it, we could have a new minister. <laughs> um, they lay out exactly how they want it to look. Um, the one that I looked at was uh, Bonneville, I believe was the name of it. It was a while ago that I looked at them. But yeah, the order in council lays out what he wants to see. And some, and one of the orders in council actually gave uh, some more direction that they wanted, the minister wanted to see uh, done. So um, you can look those up and I'll try to remember, Hazel, which ones I was looking at, but you can Google them. Uh, Alberta Order and Council or Amalgamations, uh, Dissolution am Amalgamations. And there has been, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I'll have to look it up. Sorry, I'm kaboobling trying to think of what I looked at. So does the minister do any follow-ups afterwards? Is it like a one time he puts a stamp on? Yeah, this is you your. No, I don't know that. I I don't know that. I was just looking at the order in council. Uh, but I would suspect if he put additional things that a municipality has to do, uh, the ministry would follow up with that. But that I'm just guessing on that. Um, I ha I haven't I haven't talked to any municipalities regarding that. Thank you very much, Heather, for the clarification. Thank you, Councillor Martin. That was a great question. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, would we uh, like to uh, go to the letter? <laughs> and if so, let's go there. And if there's any questions about it, let's talk about it. And uh, and then we can get all these very patient residents of Turner Valley and Black Diamond off to bed. Oh, Mayor Crane, please. Actually, I, I thought we were already talking about the letter, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were still doing quick Q and A. Um, so I guess I'll uh, I'll start off then. Uh, first of all, just to clear the air uh, for Andrew and uh, Daryl. Sorry, I was quick with you. We didn't know that you wanted to go through uh, as PD Council uh, an hour of the document. Uh, we didn't see that. We didn't know there was that many questions coming. We had no heads up that those questions were coming. So for uh, councillors, incumbents who have already been through the process, um, all the answers to those questions are on the town websites. They're in the documents. Administration and incumbent councillors could have answered those questions. Um, so it was a little frustrating for me. And that was probably why I was a little bit quick. Um, so I apologize for that because as new counselors, and I've said this in many JFACs before, ask the tough questions. It is your job to ask as many questions. Um, but we didn't know that was coming. Uh, I actually wanted to really just dive right into this letter and talk about how excited I am about amalgamation. Um, when we talk about the minister's letter and we say, well, he didn't really give us an answer. I think he 100% gave us an answer. 
and it's very clearly stated that he is ready to move this application forward to cabinet. There's not a recommendation. There's nothing else. It's pure support for that application. He agrees 100% to move it to cabinet as the application that he read is complete, meaning it met all the requirements, public input, public participation, have we done due diligence? Have we checked out all the boxes that we need for that application? We did, and it was satisfactory to him and all his deputy ministers. So that to me is a resounding call of support from the provincial government to say, move forward. Um, no, of course he put in the caveat that the previous council was in support and he just wanted a reaffirmation of the new councils. Thus we're here today. So for me, it is an absolute windfall to amalgamate. To become one community on paper, to me, is just a small box in the larger community that we all volunteer in, that we all love, that we all communicate in, that we all participate in. Diamond Valley Days, Canada Day, Parade Day. Kids don't care about the small little name change. To them, they're all one. All our kids go to Oil Fields High School. You know, as a community, there is no difference. There's not a line in the sand that says, oh, those dirty old Turner Valley people. Those days are gone, right? And to move forward now, the business community alone is fully supportive from a whole different perspective. And I think that the minister sees that as well. You know, we can mark it as Diamond Valley. The 2013 floods was the giant band-aid that cut it all down and finally put to bed that old notion of division. If it wasn't for the water system and the joining of the two towns through that system, the emergency line run across the golf course, all set up in like 24, 48 hours, amazing right? For two years, our citizens struggled through the same water restrictions. And that was a long time to be on water restrictions. But that was just another blending point to really show that we're all one community here. Now you talk about infrastructure and this and that. Well, that is what council is for. Councils sit down and they do that work for the citizens. So for me, we can take as much as you want. We can jam it all together. You're still going to have the exact same issues that happen tomorrow in Black Diamond that are going to happen in Turner Valley uh, next week. Those infrastructure issues, if you want to call them that, are there. Sure. But you don't need 14 people to do the decision making of getting that priority done. That's the blending. That's the efficiencies. We're all making the same decisions. We're all sitting in the same committees. We're sitting in the same room right now. 14 of us are sitting in a meeting where seven people could have the same discussion if it was to talk about infrastructure or capital budgets or transit or, well, West End's got some issues now and we're looking at some issues. So that's where we're at. Municipal politics is what it is. It's the decision-making of a council working with administrators to get the job done and service delivery for your community. We know that we have duplication. That's a bad word, I know. But all the signs show it, Didsbury, all the comparisons, Red Cliff. It's very obvious when you look at the numbers that are in the report that I posted on Facebook for the public to see, there are savings to be had. That's obvious. Will it be difficult? 100%. It will not be a cakewalk. But for those people who are going to sit there and champion for their community, that's the job. And I cannot see how we wouldn't support something that is progressive, that puts us forward, that puts the shining light on our area and our region. That is what we want. The ring road is complete. We are very attractive to people coming out of Calgary now, and we have to take note that growth is going to happen. We are the last small bastion of small town feel 
before development is going to start cra crawling in and you go from an Okotoks 10,000 to a 30,000 in a 16 year window. That could very easily happen here. And if you do not have aligned planning and growth strategies in place, it can be disastrous. So it's very important that we have that unified vision, the strategic plan, that IDP, if you would, that municipal development plan, all these great things that you hate to sit in a meeting and drag your eyeballs out on, but it's all part of it. And it's very important that it is done together and it's done forward thinking. You cannot think back and you can't let small little things stop you from moving forward. The world moves forward and so do communities. And we are on the precipice of another small boom in our area. And I think it is incumbent that we put our heads together. We think progressively, we move forward, not backward, and we support amalgamation 100%. That's about all I got to say about it, I think. So I apologize to Daryl and Ted for being short. Sorry, Andrew. Uh, but there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Crane. Um, it, you know, it's hard to disagree with anything that you've said. Uh, it all sounds great. Um, one thing that I will make note of, because I've heard about it from constituents, is that they don't want to be the next Okotoks. And uh, they want to maintain the feeling of a small town community. And I know that it's difficult, if not impossible, to stop progress. Um, but you know, I'll just leave it at that. What I've heard from from some people is that they would appreciate keeping the small town feel, and they feel that by amalgamating, um, we're opening the door to box stores, apartments. Um, and they're fearful of, you know, um, this year you're not allowed to park your RV in your parking lot or your, your, uh, address and, uh, what, what else comes down, um, the line after that. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it all, it all sounds great. Does anyone else want to speak to anything? Um, sorry. Uh, do we have, oh, we've got a lot of hands up. Wow. Yeah. Daryl was able to put two hands up. No, oh no, that's an order. Oh, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Dunning, please go ahead. So Barry, I just want to acknowledge uh, that and I appreciate uh, the frustration and I accept your apology wholeheartedly. Thank you, Councillor Dunning. Uh, Councillor Bain, please. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I, 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 mi I mixed up. Councillor Alon and then Councillor Bain. Thank you kindly, sure. Um, yeah, Mr. Crane, Mary Crane, um, Barry, buddy. Um, I volunteer with you on the Lions group along with Councillor Rab and Van and Hook, and we get along. We're a community, no two ways about it. I typically have a very cherub like demeanor. I get impassioned, I get enthralled, and I do go off the handle. So, for all 14 members here tonight of councils, if I've offended as well as others, I follow in the same suit. I do apologize. I do get excited sometimes. I mean, nothing by it, and I look forward to coffee quickly with everybody. But um, that being said, I hope you accept my apology again, respectfully. I do appreciate the passion everybody brings as Councillor Thompson has said before, it simply means everybody's doing their job because if 14 of us showed up and just nodded our heads and agreed every time, <laughs> wow. But I appreciate the conversation and the passion from everybody. Barry, I'm sorry for snapping. Everybody else, guys, we do get along well and we do work well together. My question officially would be for administration Last August, when we sent the report up, we had a united or joint resolution drawn up that both councils had the same draft. Will that be the case regarding this letter? Uh, is it? Could, Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Do we want it? Do we want it? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Do we want to table that and, and let... Oh, John, let stand back. Oh, okay. CAO, patience, please. Yeah, no, thanks, Mary Kelly, and uh, thanks, Councillor DeLon. I, I think it is important that the same motion goes before both councils, and it can be very simple, and I'm happy to work with uh, uh, with Ms. Brown in the morning to uh, to draw that up and, and forward it to both councils for consideration. Thank you, Count, or thank you, CAO Patience, and thank you for the question. 
uh, Councillor Alonzo. Councillor Bain. Yeah. Um, the two towns or the town, whatever it is, will survive in one manner or another, whether we amalgamate or not. The question that is before us and before the towns, perhaps, is what do you want your town to look like? Minister McIver is an astute politician. He's read the report. He's received letters both for and against amalgamation. He knows that Black Diamond in particular is deeply split. He noted that Black Diamond voted out two of the three incumbents who voted for amalgamation and re-elected both incumbents who voted against amalgamation. He's perhaps skeptical of some of the claims that were made in the uh, in, in our conversation on the 16th of December, that 100% of the people that were talked to were 100% in favor. I think that perhaps he is in effect asking councils, are you sure this is what the people want? Do the people want to amalgamate? What do the people want for their town? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bain. Councillor Rabb and then Councillor Thompson. Thank you. And uh, thanks, everybody. They always say with age comes wisdom, and I can tell you I got the age part right. I'm not sure about the other part, but let me, let me this is my, my opportunity, I guess, to address all of you before this critical vote. And I want to tell each and every one of you, it was an, it was an interesting experience tonight. And we're just getting to know each other. I hardly know Andrew or Chad. The rest of you, I can say, have some familiarity. But, you know, this is going to certainly help. And I want to state that I respect all of you, and I respect all of your votes. And I'm really hoping that we can all support the decision of our previous councils and move for amalgamation. I would suggest that this will be the most important vote that we have in our term as council. And Daryl talks about the new council could do this or that. I think I may be looking at the new council or a good number of them anyway, right in front of me when I look at this screen. I think that what we do on next, next Wednesday will determine the economic viability, the economic sustainability and prosperity of our towns. I really fully believe that very strongly. When I ran for council in 2017, I have to tell you, I was a little ticked because Turner Valley that year had the highest municipal taxes in Alberta. And I really didn't think that was such a good deal. So being a young councillor, I thought I could do better and I would be able to solve all the world's problems as we all do when we first start in council. But of course, it's not quite that easy. We were, you know, our previous council were able to hold the taxes for four years until this year, because we just can't. There is, if we want to maintain the services we have, there is just no more flex unless we amalgamate because there is flex because there be savings. When we moved here in 2009, we knew taxes were high, but you know, if you look at me, you realize that the, the window's kind of closing. Like I said, age is catching up with all of us and myself included for sure. So, but I look at you young guys, I, you know, Chad, I was watching you, your son came in a while ago and said, hi type of thing. Good night, dad. You know, I think of you young guys and all you young families. Let's say we only save four hundred thousand dollars because we get rid of a council and a CEO. Let's say we only save four thousand four hundred thousand dollars. In ten years, that's four million dollars. Well, you know what? I would like to see a rec center in our community. I'd like to see young kids have an opportunity to stay here and have some place to to play, or for us old guys to play pickleball, which I've never tried because I don't think I can play it. But in any event. That's only the tip of the iceberg. I don't. I think there's way more money than four hundred thousand on line. When I compare it with Redcliffe and and uh, Didsbury, and I and I think the same thing is true of other towns. There is way more money in the line. You know, if you think about the potential savings from staffing, from duplication, from equipment, from whatever, it, it'll definitely be there. So I know we're proud of our towns, and unlike. What Mayor Crane said, I think there are some differences in our town. I certainly think, you know, this, this, you know, we look at business. I, I really appreciate the letter that we got from one of our, uh, one of the emails we got, who has been here forever. And she said she lived here. And now she moved to Black Diamond. Uh, and she said that at one time the businesses were all over here. Well, that's what I heard. And, you know, you can say, you know, I, I appreciate Mayor Kelly that you said, 
lots of you want to keep this as a small town. I agree. But but I think that small town mentality caught up with Turner Valley along the way. And that's why you ended up with the businesses and we ended up with uh, a fewer of them. So and that can change. But, I you know, I think we have to be open for business. And that's what our council believes in. OK, so business support of us, you know. So the way I see it, we can lead because that's where we are. We're leaders of our communities. We can lead with vision and confidence and passion for a positive future. Or we can dwell on the past and say, well, in, back in 2007 or 8, when the, the motion was, was uh, you know, when, when Black Diamond voted this down, 557 people voted against it. So, you know, we can dwell on the past. But let's, let's be real here. Have there been any changes in our province in the last 14 or 15 years? Well, I can tell you, in 2008, there was a boom. And in 2009, it crashed. And you know what? With oil and everything else, we've never recovered. You know, there's, you know, at that time, you know, we had Ralph Klein's day. We had a surplus budget. We didn't have deficits like we have today. We didn't have COVID. So my opinion is we can move forward positively together. And there's so many savings that when I look at you young guys and I think you young kids, I think, wow, they have a chance. Or we can stay in our little towns. We love our towns. We can stay in our little towns and we can struggle along you know we can make ends meet but not near the opportunities we have so i think we are i know we are represented we are elected to represent the residents and i believe that's what they want yes there are some people that do not agree and they won't agree and don't confuse me with the facts it's not it's not going to happen okay and i'd particularly like to thank the the residents that are reaching out to us with their feedback positive and negative and I particularly read two today that really impressed me because these people are, you know, one's a business person, one's, I don't know what she does, but they're, they're longtime residents and they are saying, you know what, it's time. We need to move, we need to move this, but kick this, let's get this ball over the, the finish line and let's get going. So I, I probably said more than I know, but at the end of the day, hopefully you'll give it a thought. And thank you very much for listening. And, and I respect your vote. You need to know that. I respect each of you and your vote, and I hope it's a positive one for amalgamation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rob. Jeez, I wish I could adjourn the meeting on that. That was so nice. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, Councillor Thompson, not to take any uh, air to your sale. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, there's really not much more I can say. Uh, um, I, uh, I, uh, I'm everybody knows where I stand on amalgamations and the reasons why I stand behind amalgamation and and I really don't know we will we may we may see uh well we will see I agree with Councillor Rob have four million dollars and I'm I'm in the same boat as as Councillor Rob I see this benefiting our youth um you know we're not going to be here I am I'm getting older too. And so uh, I'm looking at our kids and the future of our kids and uh, not so much my kids, but my grandchildren. So uh, who all live in the area and I'll go to school in the area. And, and uh, I've seen the teeter totter between business, uh, between Turner Valley and Black Diamond. I was here when the hospital moved uh, from Turner Valley over here. And uh, I, I've seen the oil fields arena go up, which was a joint venture between the region and uh, you know, I, I Turner Valley uh, gave Black Diamond money to build that arena, and uh, so I I just I just see the future to be way better for our for our young families and moving forward and and efficiencies and uh, so that's that's where I kind of stand and uh, if if possible, I'd like to put a motion forward to accept the letter from the minister. Uh, uh, regarding the amalgamation response for uh, information. Oh, wait a minute. One other thing. Um, regarding the, the, the matching the resolutions that are going forward so that they're the same. Um, I have a question uh, about, I know that Turner Valley uh, records its meetings. Um, and I have a question about uh, Black Diamond also recording their meetings so that for prosperity that when the vote is made, that uh, if if a councillor has the opportunity to give their reasons why they voted in the way that they voted, 
that uh, uh, that is uh, saved for prosperity as well, uh, because I know Black Diamond will be recording there. So um, that would be a question for administration, I suspect. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Gordon, please. Yeah, I actually want to circle back to what uh, CAO Patience mentioned and picking up on what Councillor Thompson just said about a um, resolution that we wanted to have stated the same. So I'm wondering, it's a technical point, so bear with me, but the fact that JFAC, we have the ability to direct administration to do X, Y, and Z, would it not be wise since we've been here for already almost three hours, let's work through that resolution resolution we can vote on it tonight because my understanding is uh, this is such a key thing. I would like to see us have at least 80% uh, support tonight on the wording of that resolution. So I would like administration, if they could take it offline between the four of them right now and uh, get the terms of that, uh, the wording of that motion done, because I'm almost guaranteed that if it comes out tomorrow, there will be some debate. Some people will want this tweaked or that tweaked and may not be supportive. So that's the purpose of our JFAC. And so um, I think we should uh, have a resolution that we agree on and vote it tonight. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gordon. We do have Councillor Thompson's motion on the floor as it stands right now to accept the minister's letter. So I'll have to get through that part first. Um, um so we've got a lot of hands up i'm not so i can address every hand that's up first before we go ahead um to accept councillor thompson's motion uh and then we'll circle back like you said councillor gordon as long as that's okay with you yeah sure that's fine i think we do need to deal with that tonight Okay, thank you, Councillor Gordon. Uh, okay, Councillor Kloiber or Deputy Mayor Kloiber, please. Did you want to call the question or did you want to use my comment as an intermission of sorts while we sort out Councillor Gordon's request? Okay, I'll, what I'll do is I'll say, does anyone want to speak to Councillor Thompson's motion to accept his information? And if anyone wants to speak to that, please be known right now. Okay, so all those in favor to accept Councillor Thompson's motion to accept the paper as information. Wonderful, thank you very much. Okay, now we'll go back now. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kloiber, do you want me to start with Councillor Gordon's motion that he wants to put on the floor or do you have something to say? I have something incredibly entertaining to say. So if you want to have administration go off to the side and prepare a motion, I can clown around for you guys, and then they can come back after a few minutes. What do we do in there? Okay, uh, I will leave this to CAO Brown and CAO Patients. We should probably recess the meeting, I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're probably gonna have to take a recess here, everybody. Okay, are, okay, people are okay with the recess. Okay, um, let's say uh, we'll come back at, I don't know how much time would you guys like? 10 minutes. CAO patients, what do you think? <laughs> um, I don't think it will take us long. I'm just figuring out how we're going to uh, manage it technically. Um, um, sending out a Charlene's just gone upstairs, so we can either, um, are, are you guys, you're not at the office. We can maybe send you another quick meeting link or something on a different channel. Sure, that will be fine. Okay. Um, should we say 10 minutes? And if we're running behind, we'll let Mayor Kelly know? Yeah, I, I would say we'll take a 10-minute recess. We will uh, come back at 9.05. Uh, recess is going to start at 8.54 to be exact, but we'll come back at 9.05, so 11 minutes. Um in regards to uh, everybody that's with us right now, um, uh, just a quick thank you from myself. Um, thank you to the residents, our constituents, for being here tonight in the event that you don't come back after this recess. 
Um, I just want to uh, let you know that both councils have spent a lot of time, uh, especially recently, looking through emails and we appreciate it. We cannot say it enough how much we appreciate you getting involved. We are here to listen um, and, and thank you so much uh, for all that. So yeah, we'll, we'll come back in 10 minutes. Are we coming back to this meeting then? Yes. Yes, sir, uh, Councillor Dixon, please and thank you. We'll let administration handle their communication thing. Um, I'm, I'm gonna stay on and just maybe shut off mics and cameras if you want. Sure. And I have my hand up, but I, I'd be happy to, to uh, leave it for a closing statement uh, closer to the end, so. Thank you, Councillor Dixon, please do. Okay. Okay. Um, just for technical reasons, if all of councillors can turn off their video and their mics because webinars, we cannot stop the recording. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, mics and cameras off for everybody, please. And thank you. Temet, see you in a minute. Thank you. <clears throat> Off. We're not, we haven't, we haven't dismissed, have we? We're still just adjourned. We're just having a recess wrap. So just turn off your camera and your mic and just sit back, relax, and five after nine, come back. Uh, 10 minute, 10 minute uh, snooze. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I thought. I was here listening, but then all of a sudden I thought, oh, maybe I missed something here. Just uh, just make sure that you turn your stuff off, Councilor Rab, because uh, we are still recording. So in the event of anything uh, perhaps untimely, uh, we wouldn't like that to be on the recording. Just a word, a friendly word.
Soon enough, eh? We're lucky. It's almost baseball weather out there. We might actually be able to get out in the field this year with the restrictions now going down. But we'll see. I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous about them going away so quickly. We'll see. Time will tell. For those of you that are back with us, we're just waiting on administration. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
We're coming We're back. back. Mayor Kelly, whenever you're ready, you can reconvene. Thank you kindly. I hear the ladies coming down the steps right now, and I just want to make sure that they know when they come down that the mic and the camera are on. So right before I fire back in, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Sean, as well, for, for taking care of that. It was a group effort, Mayor Kelly. Good. Um, the mic and the camera on. So, yeah. Okay, uh, before we resume, I just need to uh, grab a document for screen share. Sure. And I'm going to be ready when you are. All yours. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, let's reconvene. 912. Uh, so, where does this leave us? Um, let's take care of Councillor Gordon's motion and then we'll wrap this up into a great little gift and we'll adjourn. So, um, just working on some screen sharing options here. Do you have it all? Yeah, go into your windows. No. Yeah. And then pull up your little document. There you go. You're okay. sharing. Okay. okay, perfect. Um, Councillor Gordon, uh, if I may, if you're able and okay, would you like to read the motion before us? Maybe we need to explain what we did. Oh, okay, sure. Um, you, yeah, you need yeah. to scroll up too, right, to the actual motions. Um, if I may. Okay, I'm going to let CAO Brown go ahead, and then uh, we'll come back to Councillor Gordon. Thank you. So, so there's two motions that really need to be made because JFAC needs, or JFAC can only recommend to councils. Um, councils actually need to make this decision. So there's two. Uh, motions before uh, committee tonight, before JFAC, so that you can see what that looks like. So first, that the committee recommend to councils of the Town of Black Diamond and Turner Valley that a resolution be considered at the next regular council meeting to support the amalgamation application submitted to the Minister of Municipal Affairs, September 14th. And then the actual motion to go forward to the councils is that the council, it, you can all read Thank you. Okay, so um, because we're screen sharing, um, it, and I don't want to put too much on Verna in terms of flipping it back and forth, uh, but um, is it is everybody okay with what they see here? Um, and if so, um, because I still have a group, a bunch of hands up. Um, and it's, again, it can be a little bit hard to, to distinguish if anyone wants to say anything. Um, I'll just open the floor uh, to anyone that would like to speak to it. If there is anyone that wants to speak to it. Yeah, if I may, uh, Chairman, I appreciate the, the, this, these two motions here, and that really captures the essence of what I was looking for. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Councillor Gordon, and thank you for for making for you know bringing it to our attention. Um, um, so Can we add one word that the council on the second motion, just grammatically? Deputy Holiday, Deputy Mayor Holiday, Holloway, not Holiday, Holloway. Dick. Should it not be that the council of the town of? Oh, that's even worse. Is it, should it, just curious, should it say the current council? No. 
the that's a bit redundant, Curtis. I think we all put our, our year and our resolution numbers as well, or the date, something, yeah. identifying it. We do, Vern, I agree. And they'll get the resolution numbers when we send it in as well. Okay, seeing some thumbs up, that's good. Okay, so for my clarity, we are gonna vote on the first one as a group. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then we need majority. We need right? 11. We need 11 out of everybody. Yeah. Okay, okay, just so that everyone's and myself, so that we're all aware. Is everybody okay with the word check on that again? Okay, um, just for clarity purposes again, is everybody okay with the wording in the first motion? I'll, I'll read it up, that the council, or excuse me, that the committee recommend to the councils for the towns of Black Diamond and Turner Valley that a resolution be considered at the next regular council meeting to support the amalgamation application submitted to the Minister of Municipal Affairs on September 14th. Do you want Mr. to Mayor, if I may? Date? Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, I think I heard uh, Councillor Lalon and Mayor Crane. Go ahead, Mayor Crane. I was just going to say we should add the date, February 16th. Okay. So, like that, the committee recommend on February. At the February 16th. Oh, at the February 16th meeting. Okay. Just add it, just add it to next regular council meeting, February 16th. The same day, so thank you, uh, Mayor Crane, for the friendly amendment. Please go ahead. If you have something else to say, don't let me cut you off. Yeah, I, I would suggest that we don't put the date in if, for some unknown reason, we can't meet on the, the February the 16th. It will be at the next regular council meeting. If I could interject, uh, Mayor Kelly. Yes, please do, Councillor Thompson. Well, at the next regular council meeting would go beyond what the minister has requested of us. So I think that uh, we will be moving forward with regular council meetings, both towns on February the 16th, unless we don't have quorum. So uh, I don't mind the date being in there. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Alon, did you still have something to add? I did, sir. Um, first motion that a resolution be considered at the February 16th, 2022 council meetings to support the amalgamation application. I don't like the phrase to support because if you're going to put that in there, then you're missing a third option that says that the council for the town of blank do not agree to support. By not having the option for either, you're binding this tonight on this vote. Because you're saying right here that, yeah, we're all going to agree to do it. We're all going to agree to agree. And there's been a lot of information that's come out tonight that a lot of us need to take back. There's a lot of communication that still has to happen. We haven't had concrete answers on a few questions that have been raised. The options need to be there to be transparent and to be honest with everybody. That option needs to be there. If I might, if I might, Mayor Kelly. Yes, please do. So the, the motion should be put forward in a positive fashion and the motion is worded that the resolution be considered. It's not leaning one way or the other. It'd be a positive motion put forward. It could be voted for or against by members of either council. Can you say that again, please? So, sorry. So the, the wording of the motion is that the resolution be considered and it's a positive motion, which the motion should be. It can certainly be voted for or against by any member of both councils. Because yeah, your motion is to agree, and if you don't agree, you vote against it, and then the motion is defeated. Correct. But the problem is, in my eyes, if you agree to the first one, you've only got one other motion, and you've eliminated the option at council meetings to vote it down. No, uh, no. If you're, you're only... If no, you you're, only, you're only voting to consider it. Yes. I know that, but well, then you, have, 
please, the vote to consider it is one thing, but if we consider it and the second motion goes through without a follow motion with an option, that first motion leads the second, which is binding. Because now everybody's agreeing. You have to have everything out that if we're going to agree that this is the motion we're going to look at, you have to have both motions on the table. Okay, Councillor Lalonde, if I may, I'm going to let uh, CAO Brown uh, make a point. I'll just turn my camera on. Okay. No, I won't. So, um, Councillor Lalonde, so I understand what you're saying, um, but JFAC can only recommend to councils. So, council, you, you wouldn't, that recommendation to support is not binding anything because council needs to make that final call. JFAC can only recommend. Mayor Kelly, um, um, Councillor Dun Dunning has a question regarding the, the resolutions, I think. Okay, Councillor Dunning. Sorry, guys, I, I can't. It's, it's difficult. We're screen sharing. I, I apologize. It's all good. And, it, and thank you for letting me speak here. I appreciate that. And thank you, uh, Councillor Thompson, for, for noticing. Uh, so to Councillor Lalonde's point, um, we're, we're, we're getting hung up on the word support. If we just take that out and just say to make a decision on on the amalgam, make a decision to support the amalgamation application, I think we can resolve this really quickly if we just change the words a little bit so he's more comfortable with it. If if, if I if I might. Yeah. So the minister's request was that he'd like a resolution from both councils expressing support for the amalgamation, which is where the wording came from. And and I, I understand Councillor DeLon's comment. However, the motion should be positive. And as I said, uh, if uh, any council members are not in favor of supporting the application, they simply vote against the motion. And Mayor Kelly. Yeah, please. And and to soothe uh, Councillor Lalonde's uh, concerns, when you go to the motion, uh, you you would request a recorded vote, and that would actually show who voted in favor of supporting the amalgamation, or who would vote against the amalgamation. But uh, CAO uh, Patience is correct. Um, you can't put a negative motion forward. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, okay. Um, Councillor Lamont uh, and, and anyone else who's a little um, dicey about this, I know you're, many of you are used to seeing options in your resolutions, but really the option for this one is to pass the motion, which indicates Council's support as a whole. And if you defeat the motion, that indicates your lack of support for the motion. So you're giving the minister the answer he's looking for either way. Does that help? Councillor Lawn, you still with us? Yeah, I'm like Councillor Rabb. I may be old, but I'm lacking in wisdom in some ways, possibly. Not to say he is. He's very smart, but I'm still trying to process this. So just give me a, a minute or two. I'm just thinking of ramifications. Thank you. I appreciate everybody's efforts. Hey, uh, if I may, <laughs> Mr. Chair, if you highlight down at the bottom of your team screen, you can choose the gallery view and you can see everybody and then you can always switch back and forth to the uh, uh, meeting that you've got as a screen share. Unless you're the one screen sharing. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm not Councillor Gordon, so. Um, so if you're not the one screen sharing, you should be able to choose the gallery view at the bottom. I'm uh, actively uh, 
So I'm going to think it's on the screen. Oh, here we go. Did you get it? Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. Would you? Geez, now I got to change my background too, Councillor Gordon. I got to find a nice beach somewhere that I can. I see all these nice things I can do. Okay, so now I can see everybody. Great. Sorry about. <laughs> wow, great. Thank you. Uh, I see Deputy Mayor Holiday has her hand up, and so does Councillor Rob. So I'll be. Let's start with Deputy Mayor, please. Yeah, I, I, the motion that we're going to vote on at council is absolutely fine. But in the first motion to get through tonight, uh, to satisfy um, Daryl, it's just like Andrew said, we could re change a few words and it would be easy. So rather than say to support the al amalgamation application, uh, just say regarding the amalgamation application, right where you have your cursor. So um, we don't have to say what the resolution is because we're already have it here in front of us we're all happy with it so not so just get rid of the word to support and just say regarding the motion's going to be regarding it just so nobody feels caught tonight on anything thank you deputy mayor holiday that does clear as mud but i appreciate it thank you that's very nice okay uh okay now Let's go, Councillor Rab. Yeah, I, I was a teacher, but I think Cindy should have been the teacher because she always does a great job of wordsmithing. All we're doing, Daryl, we have to consider this up the, the letter that the minister sent. All we're doing is saying we're going to refer it from here to council because the council's is where the decisions make is that made. So I think that makes sense to me, Daryl. Does it work for you? Good call, Cindy. Councillor Gordon. Yeah, uh, yeah, and if we wanted to be really specific, we could say regarding the minister's letter, because that's what we're voting on, and sure. that's what we're highlighting. Not just regarding the amalgamation application, it's regarding the minister's letter in reply to our application. That's what I'd like it to see, because like Daryl said, you know, to take to alleviate some of your concerns about the request of support, we now highlight because we each know what the letter says, right? We know the letter says we want to know where you're at. So if we say regarding the minister's letter uh, about our application, uh, I would be good with that because it specifies for us as council and for the community what in fact we're going to be deciding on the 16th of February. That's my thoughts. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. I think that's perfect. Okay. Let's vote on this. Who, who has made this motion? Okay, so <laughs> Councillor Gordon has made the motion, I believe, if, if I may. Councillor Gordon, is that correct? Sure, I'll make that motion. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Mayor Green. Uh, recorded vote, obviously. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Crane. Um, I'll take it. Can you, can you see everybody? Uh, can I take the motion off the screen now? Is everybody okay yeah. with the motion? Yeah, I can see everybody. Okay. Can you see everyone? Okay. I can see everybody. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to need this one as well. Sure. Okay, so <laughs> when, when we make the motion, if I could just have everybody hold their hand up um long enough that we could get a, re a recorded vote please and thank you okay so uh i'm just going to read the motion one last time and then we'll vote on it <clears throat> that the committee recommend to the councils for the towns of black diamond and turner valley that a resolution be considered at the february 16th 2022 council meetings regarding the minister's letter in response to the amalgamation application submitted to the Minister of Municipal Affairs on September 14th, 2021. If nobody else would like to speak to it, all those in favor? Uh, we don't have to specify what committee, right? No. 
So I uh, yes. see everybody's hand. Everyone's in support? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's easy. I can put the names okay. later. <laughs> and I'm just going to ask, just in the event that I yes. counted wrong, all those opposed. None. And just to clarify, you did say February 14th, but I think you wanted to say 16th when you read 16th. that out. So 16th Thank is correct. Thank you, Mary Crane. My, my apologies. Okay. Now, the other one is for councils. Yeah, that's going to We're going to deal with that next week. That will be... Um, I believe that this will be the motion that will go forward to councils on the RFD okay. if councils, if JFAC is in support of that. Okay. So, in the, in the wording. Okay. So, before we wrap this up, oh, uh, Councillor Thompson, please. Um, just for Sean and uh, um, Charlene. Uh, would you like me to put a motion forward that council agree to the following motion to go forward to the February 16, 2022 uh, meeting for council's consideration? I thought we just did that. No, we didn't say we, we did. Well, we did, but I guess we sort of did, but this is this is recommending that a resolution be considered. Um, so, yeah, but it, it, it yeah. Yep. Holiday, would you like to chime in? I absolutely trust that admin is going to make sure that this gets copied and pasted into the agenda. I think it's very clear that we're getting a resolution. We all know what it is. Uh, it's not going to change. So I okay. think we can move on. Um, okay. I do I do want to ask for a couple of pieces of information to make sure they didn't get lost through the course of the meeting. One is that we really wanted more information on addressing just to get that hashed out exactly what it's going to mean for our residents in a clearer way than has been, that has been communicated. Um, if admin can work on that. Also the reserve information we wanted that and also councillor thompson mentioned uh being making sure that both towns were recording next week when these votes are made because it is a historic moment um so those are the three things i wanted to bring up thank you deputy mayor holiday okay i do see some hands up still in the uh in the side here so um, and I know that Councillor Dixon did want to um, say some things before we wrap up tonight, and, and that has not been lost on me yet, Councillor Dixon. Um, as we get to that point, I do want to make sure um, I see that uh, Councillor Martin and Councillor Gordon also have their hands up. Um, so if we're okay with the motion side, are we okay with, is everything okay? We're okay there? Okay. Great. Okay, so let's go through uh, the rest of this. Um, uh, Councillor Dixon, would you like to speak uh, now before Councillor Martin? Go ahead. Sure, I can. Yeah, um, just bear Please with me. Do. I just made a couple notes here, uh, sure. just sort of in closing. Um, I, I just wanted to say that um, I, I would like to recognize that I really appreciate the passion that I've seen from everybody here tonight. Um, our future is at stake. Uh, our future of our communities are at stake here. Um, we, we cannot make any mistakes and I believe our citizens are very well presented by this group that I've seen here this evening. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure listening to everyone, I, and I certainly appreciate the views that I've seen. Uh, it's really, you know, uh, made me feel comfortable moving forward. Um, I would like to also acknowledge and thank the past members and, and, and administration for the work that's been done on this up until now. Uh, it's given us a lot to uh, talk about and a lot, a lot of, a lot to uh, go over. Uh, I'm and I'm all confident that whatever decision is made will be in the best interests of our respective communities as a whole. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Um, wonderful. Uh, Councillor 
Martin, please. Thank you very much, Mayor Kelly. Uh, again, I would like to uh, say the same as what Councillor Dixon said, uh, thanking everybody for their work and and it's been a real pleasure again to be hearing all the views and gathering more information. Um, just the one question last night I had brought up at our own uh, Committee of the Whole meeting is it is it a possibility that the meeting link can be put onto some of the social media pages, some of the more popular ones like Diamond Valley Communities and that sort of thing to get more people engaged? Yeah, uh, CEO Brown, please go ahead. So, uh, Councillor Martin, the Town of Black Diamond has a social media policy to suggest that the staff will only utilize their town platforms for um, advertising meetings. If it so happens that somebody wants to share uh, information on those other sites that is not a town staff member, <laughs> they be, and I because that's we have that social media policy that applies to staff. Um, that, there, that we can share, they can share that information on those other sites. Does that make sense? Thank you very much, Charlene. Okay. Uh, seeing no hands. Um, uh, Mayor Crane, any uh, any closing remarks? The what you said earlier was great. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I just wanted to give you an opportunity if you wanted to say anything before we wrap up. Uh, I was just curious. I thought Cloyber was going to speak before. She said she had something funny to say. We went on <laughs> break. She didn't. She didn't deliver a joke. So I, I want to know what that funny was. Let's see if I remember the punchline. I'm going to pick on Councillor Bain, only because I consider him a worthy adversary. Um, Councillor Bain, you posited about four hours ago that uh, the people of Black Diamond had spoken in the most recent election by not re-electing two candidates who voted for amalgamation. But I feel compelled to remind you that both Heather and I ran on a pro-amalgamation platform and she received the most votes and I received the second most votes. So just putting that out there. Something to think about. <laughs> okay, I thought about it. <laughs> oh no, take your two, time, Ted. Two were two were still defeated, and two, uh, one hundred percent of the ones that voted against were reelected. So, if, if that's how you wish, whatever you, think you wish of it. I'm just your, pointing out that the minister of municipal affairs probably noticed that and not only that i know that someone wrote a letter to him stating that i so also read I that letter, but i was very confused that someone forgot about me no no you you were you were the the number three of the two out of three you're wait a minute where'd i write it oh, never mind anyway. <laughs> good night everyone I'm not, I'm not going to split hairs here, but I got the most votes. So, uh, but I know I didn't run for council, so I'm not even. Gonna get to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, there, Miss Smarty Pants. <laughs> none, nonetheless, uh, everybody. Um, words cannot express um, the gratitude um, that that I feel for the patience that the incumbents have sat through tonight. Uh, by no means that I mean to uh, hoodwink or put anybody uh, in an uncomfortable position in regards to the questions that I wanted to ask. Um, I will consider that in the future, Mayor Crane, um, and most certainly communicate uh, those types of um, questions or feelings prior to the meeting. So um, if that was a lapse of judgment on my behalf, I apologize. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I do thank you. Uh, everybody in Turner Valley and my own uh, council, thank you so much. Uh, before I adjourn, I will give Ben and Hook the last uh, say, and then I'm adjourning this meeting. I, I just want to also thank everybody so much. Um, this has been a really, really amazing uh, JFAC meeting, and and having everybody voice their opinions and um, just being so passionate about it, it, it it's really wonderful. It, it's it's really helped me as a new councillor, um, you know, uh, with some of my views and my understanding of the situation. And uh, again, like all I'd like to say is just thank you guys so much. I really, uh, I've been, I'm, I'm enjoying working with every one of you.
very, very much. With that being said, at uh, 9.40, unless anyone wants to push it for 20 more minutes, but I don't think so, uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Oh, does it? Ted, if you want to chime in, please do. I, I hope that it is noted that uh, Deputy Mayor Kloiber considered me worthy adversary, but the corollary to that is that the rest of you aren't worthy. Yeah. <laughs> Their That's turn what me. she thinks. Their turn will come. We, right. we didn't, uh, Mayor Kelly, we didn't have an in-camera section. Oh, uh, yeah, we, uh, we. It wasn't required. It wasn't required. We did, but it wasn't required, uh, oh, Councilor. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for asking. Um, to those uh, residents of both communities, thank you so much for your engagement this evening. And, uh, you know, again, we're, we're very happy to uh, represent uh, both communities and potentially one day Diamond Valley. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks Take a lot. Care. Think hard on the consequences and the positives and where it goes.